Hello, folks. Hello, mate. Hello, buddy. Today we gonna read Dorian Gray book. Just a random part, maybe just some parts of beginning, and uh, it's uh, it's gonna be. Uh, in like English practice for me and for you, if you uh, wanna, if you wanna improve your <clears throat> English, and I think that, uh, reading these kind of books is uh, the great way. You know, we're gonna read and uh, we're gonna check some words which is new for us you know and uh, that's gonna be I think good idea okay let me find that book for read the picture of Dorian Gray uh, I hope we're gonna find that free here we go the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Okay, here we go. The preface. The artist is the creator of beautiful things to reveal art, art and conceal the artist is art's aim. The critic is uh, he who can translate into another manner or a new man, natural, natural, his uh, impression of beautiful things. The highest and the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. Those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things are corrupt without being charming. Okay, let me understand this one. The highest as the lowest form of the highest as the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. Is the lowest form of criticism. Okay. So those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things a corrupt those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things corrupt without being charming. This is fault. Uh, what would uh, what the author want to say? Like, uh, it's like uh, how they saying prejudice. Let me check. And yeah, prejudice, prejudice. Prejudice, yeah. Prejudice. It's like a prejudice when you see. I don't. I don't know. Let's say very nice girl, but you have a, a bad stereotype about her without knowing her deep, like uh, personally. Okay. And the uh, author saying that is fault. Those who find beautiful meanings in a beautiful things uh, cultivated. Okay, let me see what it what it is cultivated. Yeah, cultivated. Uh, cultivated. Yeah, cultivated. It's a. Uh, Adjective mean refined and well educated. In other in other words, it's it's a uh, educate person. Okay, those who find beautiful meanings in beautiful things are the cultivated. But why it's like this? Because. Yeah, because I don't know, something could be beautiful, 
I mean outside, but inside it's, uh, you know, kind of empty and uh, meaningless. Okay, let's try to understand what he, what Arthur want to say. For this, there is hope. There, uh, there are the elect to whom beautiful things mean only beauty. There is no such a thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. Oh, yeah, I agree with that because, you know, moral moral, and uh, not moral is kind, I think, uh, subjective things. And, uh, but at the same time, bad or good also. But if book popular, it, it should be a good book, you know. That's all. The 19th century dislike of realism is the range of Caliban seeing his own face in a glass. The 19th century dislike of uh, romanticism is the rage of Caliban not seeing his own face in a glass. The moral it's recording, yeah. The moral life of man forms part of the subject matter of the artist, but the morality of art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. Very nice but not understandable for me words. The moral life of man forms of parts of subject matter of the artist, but the morality of the art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. But the morality of art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. <clears throat> nice quote. But I really didn't get that 100%. Like first, first uh, one I get it, like uh, the moral life of a man forms part of the subject matter. Uh, but the moral morality of art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. No, I didn't get that. No artist desires to prove anything. No, uh, no artist desires to prove anything, even things that are true can be proved. No artist has uh, ethical sympathies. An ethical sympathy in an artist is an unpardonable mannerism of style. No artist is ever morbid. The artist can express everything, though, and language it to the artist an instrument of an art. Thought, sorry, thought and language to the artist's instruments of an art. Vice and virtue uh, to the artist's materials. Yeah, I, f I remember the right pronouncing of single word. Materials for an art. Vice and virtue to the... Vice and virtue to the artist's materials for an art. Oh, let me check what the fuck wise is the meaning. Wise, uh, wise, wise, wise. It's like immoral or evict behavior or immorality. Oh, I see. In that case, why are they calling wise president? <laughs> It's already kind of, you know, you can see their true face without a meaning. Okay. From the point of view of form, the type of all the arts in the art of the musician, from 
the point of view of feeling the actor's craft is a type. All art is at one surface and symbol, and those who beneath the th surface to the surface do so at their per peril. Those who go beneath, what is beneath? You know, in this classic literature, so many words which I hear in first time, you know, beneath mean extending or, di uh, direct or directly underneath. At a lower level, ah, oh, it's like uh, at the down, like a below, okay? And those who beneath the surface to do their peril okay what the fuck is surface 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 meaning the geometry is uh surface surface it's like outside exterior okay to do it there peril what is it peril Peril meaning peril, sorry, peril. It's a serious and immediate danger, or in other words, it's a risk. Okay, try. Okay, let's try to get this sentence to the simple and more understandable way. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their peril, peril, peril. In other words, uh, th those people who go uh, down, um, they taking risk, something like this. Those who read the symbol do so at their peril. Those who read the symbol do so at their peril. Nobody fucking using this peril. peril, peril. It's kind of old fashioned word, I think. It is the spectator. The spectator scouts. Let me check. It's a. Uh, let me check spectator meaning of a person who watches at the show or the event. Okay, in other words, uh, people who watching, viewer, watcher, observer. It is spectator and not live that art really mirrors diversity of opinion about a war about a work of art shows that the work is new complex and vital when critics disagree with the artist in accord with himself we can forgive a man for making a useful things thing as long as he doesn't admire it the only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires intensely. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it. Yeah, it's... Uh, mm, people... Okay, let's say... Uh, let's uh, let me as an example give you tiktok videos some of them so fucking dumb but why are they doing that i mean why people are creating these kind of videos because other people admire this watching this that's why it's uh, for them it's like a win-win
even though that other people could think that it's, it's stupid. All art is quite useless. Wow. <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Okay, chapter one. The studio was filled with the rich odor of roses, and when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden, they came through the open door, the heavy scent of the lilac. The heavy scent, let me check what's the meaning. Scent, S-C-E-N-T. Scent means smell. Okay. Uh, you know that Hugo Ball, so I, I like this perfume scent, but <laughs> uh, the, as we see the translation of that word is so primitive, just a smell. Okay. Okay, where? Um, open door, the heavy. Okay, let me from from the from the beginning. The studio was filled with the rich odor of roses, and when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden. They can throw the open door, the heavy scent, scent of the lilac, lilac, I think it's a kind of flower, let me check. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know, kind of, mm, how they calling this? Oh, this uh, color. A oh, violet, yeah, violet, violet color. A flower with the violet color. Or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering form. From the corner of the Divan of Persian saddle banks on which he was lying smoking as uh, was his custom. Innumerable cigarettes. Lord Henry Wharton could, uh, it's a name, Lord Henry Wharton could just catch the gleam of the honey sweet and the honey colored blossoms. Of a laburnum who tremulous branches seemed hardly able to bear uh, the burden of the be of a beauty uh, so flame like as theirs, and now and then the fantastic shadows of birds in uh, flight flitted across the long to certain certains that were stretched in front of the huge window, producing a kind of uh, momentary Japanese effect, and uh, making him think of those pallid, jade-faced painters of Tokyo, who many words I couldn't get, actually, by trying to catch the point. Th th throw the medium of an art that is necessarily immobile, seek to convey the sense of sweet swiftness and motion. The sullen murmur of the bees shouldering the, their way through the long unmown, unmown grass or cycling with the monotonous insistence around the dusty gilt horns of the straggling woodbine seem to make uh, the stillness more oppressive. The dim roar of London was like the bored note 
of a distant organ. In the center of the room clamped to an upright seal stood, stood the full-length portrait of a young man of extraordinary personal beauty, and uh, in front of it, some little distance away, was sitting the artist himself, Basil, it's a name, Basil, ba maybe Basil, I don't know which pronounce it right, Basil Howard whose sudden disappearance some years ago caused at the, at the time such uh, public excitement and uh, gave rise to so many strange conjectures. Conjectures, let me check. Conjectures. Conjectures meaning, uh, it's like uh, guessing, yeah, uh, speculation, guessing, hypothesis, hypothesis. Let me check pronouncing. Conjectures, conjectures, yeah. As the painter looked at the gracious and comely from he had so skillfully mirrored in his art, a smile of pleasure passed across his face and seemed about to linger there. But the sudden started up and, closing his eyes, placed his fingers upon the lids, as uh, though he sought to imprison within his brain some curious dream from which he feared he might awake. It is your best work, Basil, the best thing you have ever done, said Lord Henry languidly. You must certainly send it next year to the Grosvenor. The academy is too large and too vulgar. Whenever I have gone there, uh, there have been either so many people that I have not been able to see the pictures, which was dreadful. Dreadful. Let me see. Dreadful. What's the meaning? Dreadful. Oh, oh, it's like a terrible, uh, scary. Yeah, terrible, scary. Oh, so many pictures that I haven't been able to see the people, which was worse. The Grosvenor is really the only put place. I don't think I shall send it anywhere, he answered, tossing his head back in that odd way that used to make his friends laugh at him at Oxford. No, I wouldn't send it anywhere. Lord Henry elevated his eyebrows, elevated like uh, going up, move it up, I, I guess. Like elevator. Oh, let me see. Yeah, I think so. And looked at him in amazed throw in thin blue wreath of smoke that uh, curled up in such fanciful whorls from uh, his heavy opium tainted cigarette. No, send it anywhere. Not, not send it anywhere, my dear fellow. Why have you any reason? What all the chaps you painters are? You do anything in the world to gain a reputation as uh, soon as you have won. You seem to want to throw it away. It's silly of you. For there is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. A portrait like this would see you far, far above all the young men in England and make the old man quite jealous if old men are uh, ever capable of any emotion. Like, uh, it, it's like a inside 
his, his mind thoughts like how that old man uh, say compliment to him I guess it's like this I know you will laugh at me he replied but I really can't exhibit it I have put too much of uh, myself onto into it Lord Henry stretched himself out on the divan let me check divan Yeah, Divan and laughed. Divan is uh, like a bed. It's a synonym of bed. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, I knew you would, but it's quite true all the time, all the same. Too much of yourself in it upon my word the seal i didn't know uh, you were so vain and uh, i really can't see any resemblance between you with your ragged strong face and your coal black hair this young adonis who looks as if he was made out of ivory and rose leaves why my dear basil he's a narcissus and you well of course uh, you have an intellectual expression and all that but beauty beauty real beauty ends where intellectual expressions begins interesting quote Let me, let me read that again. Why, my dear Basil, he is a narcissus, and you, well, of course, you have an intellectual expression and all that, but beauty, real beauty, ends where intellectual expressions begins. Ah, oh, ends. Interesting. Like uh, when some something intellectual starting uh, they're not possible to be a beauty or what intellect is it in self a mode of exaggeration exaggeration let me check pronouncing exaggeration oh it's like uh, overplaying dramatization. Oh, yeah, I see. Overplaying dramatization. Okay. When you, in other words, when you are making something, some situation or some emotions too much than usual, you know, and destroys the. Okay, let me start from that line. Intellect in itself, a mode of exaggeration. Intellect in itself, a mode of exaggeration and destroys the harmony of any phase. The moment, the moment one sits down to think, one, become, one becomes all knows or or forehead or something horrid look at the successful man in any of the learned professions how perfect the highness they are except of course in the church but then in church uh, they don't think a bishop keeps on saying at the age of 80 what he was told to say when he was a boy of 18 18 and as a natu natural consequences he always look at, looks absolutely delightful your mysterious young friend whose name you have never told me but
but whose pictures really fascinate me, never thinks. I feel quite sure that he is some brainless, beautiful creation who should be always here in winter when we have no flowers to look at. Oh my God! Who is who is Rainbow here? <laughs> You know, it's not just a rainbow. He saying like, uh, if person beautiful, he should he or she should be stupid. Uh, let me continue reading. Uh, he's some brainless, beautiful creature. Wow, who should be always here in winter when we have no flowers to look and. Uh, always here in summer when we want something to chill our intelligence chill our intelligence <laughs> don't flatter yourself basil you're not in the least like him <laughs> he's saying like uh, he, that he is smart but ugly oh my god you don't understand me, Harry, answered the artist. Of course I'm not like him. I know that perfectly well. I know that perfectly well. Indeed, I should be sorry to look like him. You shrug your shoulders. I'm telling you the truth. There's a fatality about all physical and intellectual distinction. Distinction. Let me see. Distinction. Meaning uh, distinction, no, oh, like uh, difference. Okay, there's a fatality about all physical and intellectual distinction, the sort of fatality that seems to dog through history, the faltering steps of kings. It is better not to be different from one's fellows. The ugly and stupid have the best of its of it in this world. They can sit at their ease and gape at the play if they know nothing of victory. The least spirit, the knowledge of defeat. They live as well as uh, we all should live undisturbed indifferent and without disquit disquit what is it disquit that's why i like you know classic literature that you can uh, uh, improve your vocabulary and uh, you can speak, you can express your thoughts much better. Okay, discreet, what's the meaning? No, oh, sorry, disquiet, disquiet, disquiet. Oh, it's like uh, anxiety, worry, um, a feeling of worry or unease. Okay, let me. Let me, let me. Let me share <clears throat> this one. Disquiet. Vocabulary. Disquiet. And it's like anxiety, okay. Okay, in other words. And also, you know, I like Cambridge Dictionary because they giving the meaning in a very easy and understandable way. But now, okay. A feeling of worry, it's, I think it's enough. Yeah. This kind of 
meaning with the and let's take some <clears throat> synonyms of that is uh, like this let's say anxiety distress anxiety distress why distress it should be stress no anxiety panic yeah i think it's enough anxiety panic okay synonyms and anxiety panic public disquiet about animal testing it's like an example sentence you know and uh, <clears throat> let me let me make my example it's gonna be Let's say I felt disquiet. Disquiet on exam. All people feel that, I think. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. So let's back to Dorian Gray. Um, they live as well, should live undisturbed, indifferent, and without disquiet. In other words, they have to live in a boring with a with a boring routine. You know, they neither bring ruin upon others, nor even receive it from alien hands. Alien at that time they knew that <clears throat> that kind of was you rank and well Harry my brains such as they are my art whatever it may be worth Dorian great great good looks we shall all suffer for what the gods have given us suffer terribly. Dorian Gray, is that his name? His name? Asked Lord Henry, walking across the study towards Basil Hallward. Yes, that is his name. I didn't intend to tell you, to tell it to you. But why not? Oh, I can't explain. When I like people immensely, I never tell their names to anyone. It's like surrendering a part to them. I have grown to love secrecy. It seems to be the one thing that can make modern life mysteries or marvelous to us. The common, the commonest thing is delightful if uh, one only hides it. When I leave town now, I never tell my people where I'm going. If I did, I would lose my all my pleasure. It is all a silly habit, I dare say, but somehow it seems to bring a great deal of romance into one's life. I suppose you think me awfully foolish about it? Not at all, answered Lord Henry, not at all, my dear Basil. You seem to forget that I'm married, and uh, the one charm of marriage is that it makes a life deception absolutely necessary for both parties. I never know where my wife is, and my wife never knows what I'm doing. When we meet, we do meet occasionally. When we dine out together or go down to the deuce, we tell each other the most absurd story with the most serious faces. My wife is very good at it, much better, in fact, than I am. She never gets confused over her dates and uh, i always do but when she does find me out she makes no row at all i sometimes wish she would i sometimes wish she would but some, she merely laughs at me 
I hate when you talk about your marriage. Life Harry said Basil Lauer strolling towards the door that led into the garden. I believe that you are really a very good husband, but uh, that you are thoroughly ashamed of your own virtues. You are an extraordinary fellow. You never say a moral thing, and you never do a wrong thing. Your cynicism, oh my god, what is this? Cynicism? Oh, cynicism. Cynicism. In other words, it's a suspicion, uh, delusion. Pessimism, interesting. Cynicism. 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 Okay, your cynicism is simply a pose. Being natural is simply a pose. The most irritating pose I know, cried Lord Henry laughing and the two young men went out into the garden together and uh, ensconced themselves on a long bamboo seat that stood in the shade of tall average bush the sunlight lived over the polished leaves and the grass white daisies were tremulous but god damn so many words which i don't know yeah, i think for today it's enough thank you for listening this fucking boring reading.